welcome everybody to the Monday, March 13th um, meeting of the Conley Select Board. And at 6.30, it will be the joint meeting of the Select Board Finance Committee and Capital Improvement Committee. Um, call the meeting to order. The first item is vote to approve the minutes of March 6th. So good. I um, make a motion to approve. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have three warrants. We have an accounts payable warrant in the amount of $559,817.26. We have a payroll warrant in the amount of $128,994.04. And we have a payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $31,564.29. I did, I did look through all those. The accounts payable warrant is very high. Um, this is the, the account, the, the time in the cycle that we pay to all the schools with the town. So, so there's 300 and something thousand to Frontier, and 100 and something thousand to Franklin Tech, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why that one is really high. Everything else is just our regular payroll and regular deductions for people. I mean, it's about our number. I, I would move to approve those. Uh, second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 It's, Aye. it's unanimous. <laughs> Meetings attended by select board members. Chris. Aye, none for me. Erica. Um, well, I was at the governor's press conference. She announced the rural director of rural initiatives, but wasn't really a meeting, but I was there. Um, yeah, I had a bunch of meetings, uh, the school, the frontier budget hearing, uh, and then the next night returning for the passage of the school, the frontier budget, the, uh, um, had a, had a, he had several emergency management hearing, uh, uh meetings with Chris Marsden and, uh, Michael, whatever the radio, the, the state, uh, radio guy who, Went through our uh, our radio setups, our emergency radio setups at the grammar school, which is the emergency management, um, you know, center of operations, um, as well as the public shelter, and then our our substitute one, which is the highway, the, the fire department auxiliary, and he got all the equipment out, and, he, uh, and so we're going to be doing some equipment upgrades, but there's a likelihood that those will be gifted by the state. Um, so we'll be let's hope we so for that. Um, uh, and also, I just did a a, a meeting, um, a, a, a Massachusetts Emergency Management Association meeting that was also with EverSource, uh, uh, the, the the hub, the municipal hub. How to in that, that's in case there's in case there's an actual emergency. <laughs> um, um, and uh, what else? And we and I was at the MVP planning meeting um, with the MVP grant, which is which is a lot of meetings. Uh, public comment. Anybody? Any public? Jamis, it's just you again. <laughs> yes, Jamis is joining the meeting tonight. Um. So at 615, we were going to hear from um after this hour coming at 615. City was. Um so while we're waiting for how five minutes for Howard, we can talk about a couple things that were on uh, that were elsewhere on the agenda. So Anybody have a special specific preference? We can we can talk about ARPA. We can talk about um, the transfer station public hearing. So we just do it then um, in order. So uh, in unfinished business, there's an item about discussion and possible vote on the obligation of the remaining ARPA funds. And because Chris was not here, uh, it was we tabled it until tonight. 
um, in the hope that we would find unanimity mm -hmm. amongst our discussion. Okay. Um, so, and, and I guess I've, since this is this is basically Bernice, um, so so why don't you tell us exactly what it is that you're looking that that you're hoping that the select board will will agree to? Oh well, um, so far just to recap, so far we've spent money on rapid tests, on, an awful lot on the grammar school sick um, pay buyback, um, some software for the town drilling the well for the um, new public safety building. And at this point, um, the public buildings committee, well, our, our um, uh, what's ex extended hearing um, is supposed to be tomorrow night with CONCOM, but that's been postponed again, <laughs> but it was supposed to be on the 28th and that was postponed to talk about the design of the new um, addition for the public safety building. And, I, we do not have an estimate in hand yet. However, um, it's a good bet that it's going to cost us more than what's left in ARPA, which does have to be um, obligated by December 31st of 2024 and then spent completely by December 31st of 2026. So um, the thought was that perhaps we could spend the rest of the funds dedicate them to that new public safety building, which would certainly reduce the amount of money that the town would have to um, find in order to create that. And would certainly send a signal to the town that the select board is in favor of that, if that is if the board chooses to vote on it. Um, still here? Do you want to add something about um, the public building? Okay. Okay. And so, so, so as I see it, the, the select board had earlier um, expressed its interest in having using that money for the public safety building and for this building. Yes, for the lift, and, and for the for the lift. Right. And so, to to formally say we want to use all of it for that building means that we're using none of it for this building. Yeah, my concern there is the reason I wanted to use it for this building for the lift is so we could sell the other building and get funds from that building that exactly. we could also put into the public safety building. Well, that's, oh, yeah. So just to back up, I think the problem is that, well, number one, we may be able to get the lift funded through a grant. Okay. Um, are there any other upgrades we would need to do over here or just the lift as the primary? There will be some other upgrades. Um, a number of years back, Tom had gotten some grant funds to investigate what other changes would need to be made here to bring it up to ADA standards. Mm -hmm. So we do have that first, you know, it's, that was a few years ago, so the prices will have changed. A lot of it has to do with placement of knobs and, and widening of doors and all that grants and that, all that kind of stuff that goes, goes with it. Um, the concern that I have, and I'm not sure if the whole public um, buildings committee shares it, but you know, to, to try to do it all at once, that's an awful lot of effort on a small group of people who are already putting in an awful lot of work just to try to get this one done. So the overall thought in my head originally was that we get the public safety building set. And we get everybody moved out of the upstairs and they're all set over there. Then we work on the town hall and get that up to speed and get everybody out from below in the town hall over here. One of the issues I will say is going to definitely be um, front and center is the amount of storage space that we might need. There's no basement in this building. So if we get rid of the other building, we're going to have to figure some of those things out. So I guess I was looking at it as more of a phased don't want to kill everybody trying to make them do everything at once kind of approach. And so, so, so I get that. The thing about it is that the public, public safety building, it, there's no question in my mind that the town will vote to incur debt for that building. Public safety, yes. Um, this building, the town meeting has already denied funding to fix this building up. So, uh, so to the extent that this four hundred thousand that remains um, can be used as a uh, match 
or as some way to encourage the incurring of debt, but showing that the select board is using almost what they have. But like, you know, I, I like the idea of saving, to the, uh, of, say, of saying we want to fund this building too, because I, if we, if without ARPA money to apply to this building, um, this building becomes more, fixing this building up becomes a lot more of a hurdle. So I, like, I, I, in theory, we still, to, to me, I still want to like say, both, like we want to fund both buildings and we understand that the majority of those costs are going to be for, for, for the public safety building. But um, I like the idea of using it more of a matching fund to, and then to record, to, to, to you know, to, to get, you know, to, to incur debt, to, to, to borrow money to fix up the rent. You know, we don't have to pay for it, all of it. Um, I then to agree. That was my one fear also, is that it, I, I think everybody believes the public safety building is the priority. But because of that, I think that we'll have town support or funding some fund or we want for throwing away money on two buildings when we only need one that makes sense <laughs> we only need we only need one of these buildings we don't need the town offices and we don't know that yet that's the problem in all honesty i mean that's that's the conundrum for me because there is an awful lot of issues when it comes to storage and just how we're going to deal with that the entire basement of that building is still so i would useful storage or just storage Things that have to be kept. Okay. And you know, I mean, a lot half of it is is council on aging equipment, but the other half are documents that we have to figure out. So the whole dealing with town documents is a whole nother area that we have to approach. And I can't even go for money for that yet because we have to figure out what we have and what actually needs to be saved. And that's a very time consuming process. So the only thing I would say, and you know, <clears throat> I, I want to see the both get done. So it doesn't, doesn't matter to me. The only thing I would say is that it, it will split people's time. It'll make it more difficult for us to be doing two projects at once and juggling two balls. In addition, you literally will have to have all the money spent by December 31st of 2026. And I know that sounds like a long time away, but trust me, it's going to go by very quickly. So. Those are, those are parameters I think we can deal with though. I mean, that's, I mean, we'll have to crack the whip. We'll have to crack the on whip. On our volunteers? On that committee. He is a we'll, have crack, we'll have to crack the whip on that committee. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, uh, but it's been a while since we've flogged any of our committees. So it's. Well, would our volunteers be doing anything about this lift that's needed? I mean, isn't that all from outside contractors? We need to do that work. No, that's all part of us. You know, the people who have thankfully agreed to be on the public buildings committee have a vast amount of knowledge and experience in doing this. And they're going to need to be integral to the whole process. People come up with things that, you know, certainly never occur to me. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I personally, I feel like we should take that to the committee. They're willing to take on both, and it might, that's you know, a lot of work. And it might it's not, it might not work out. But if we don't, if we don't at least aim for that, then we're not gonna. Then we know it won't work out. So maybe. I don't, I don't know why you think it. We know it won't work out because well, if I can apply for a lift, a grant which includes the building of the shaft and the lift itself. That's no money out of anybody's pocket. You not know? guaranteed. Not though, it? It's not guaranteed, but I mean, I've been speaking with the MOD department, you know, the Massachusetts Office of Disability, and I have no reason to think that they would deny us. They might. But that was just the lift as the engineer. Yeah. And are there any ADA upgrades that we know need to be done apart from the lift? I mean, you talked about, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, is there, can we put money towards? you know, new doorknobs and or there, that... well there already is a little bit of money. I want to say maybe about four or five thousand dollars left from what Tom had gotten before. But when the assessment was done on this building, 
the, the changes didn't seem to be all that expensive. Now there might be other things when we get to renovating the upstairs, that's a whole different ball of wax. I don't know enough about how much that would cost to redo that. Um, depends, on, depends on all the paneling and all the <laughs> modular modulation you want for different mm -hmm. And again, those are the kinds of things that you need to do as one piece. So doing the lift isn't just like we do the lift and then we worry about this. You've got to think about the design of what you're doing upstairs that goes with the lift. Where are the doors going to be? What's the how's the access going to be? All that kind of stuff. So I guess in my mind, I was seeing them as two distinct separate projects. And I don't know, I just, I feel a little nervous about asking folks to do all that much work at once. That's the thing, I'm, I'm only thinking about the allocation of funds. And you're either putting everything into one bucket or you're mm -hmm. dividing the two, you know, 90, 10. Well, okay, 400,000 so. is not gonna get you a new public safety building. Oh, I know. And, um, I want to say the lift probably with the engineering and everything would be, I don't know, maybe just shy of 200,000. I don't know anything about the upstairs. There is another I mean, pot of money right. though, yeah, I mean, that's, that's but that's true. something else that, you know, I guess my concern would be an allocation of ARBA. Let's just make sure that we allocate it and spend it before the deadlines. Yeah. Other mm -hmm. than that, that's the only thing yeah. that really makes me like, yes. okay we, we gotta are, do that we are not sure. giving that money back yeah i agree with that <laughs> like that is not gonna happen we will spend it so well i mean if you want to deliberate more that's no that's fine that's you, you don't need to go for, go forward but don't spend all of it we'll just keep posted on what you're spending it on but we, okay what, what, what do you need from us um well there wasn't a specific request for me tonight this was yeah. actually not just well, my okay. well, no, there was, there, okay. there was, a, you, you, you wanted this to be a more formal because in the past we had discussed it, but you, there wasn't like a, we, we were, I, to me, it was like we were of a single mind, but you wanted like, you wanted a vote or something like that. Right. What I had been told was that the single mind was that it was all to go to the public safety board. So if that's not the case, that's fine. I just, yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. Good. You want, you want to vote? I well, um, I don't know what would the vote be. Well, we have to have the, the money allocated by December thirty first of twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. Oh, allocated by twenty. Allocated. Spent by twenty six by December twenty sixth. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it does go by quickly. Yeah. So part of the thing would be, you know, the part of the plan, I think, on part of the public buildings committee was that we wanted to come forward with an article or something at town meeting to ask for help with this. Yeah. But we're going to need to know kind of what we're allowed to do. You know, if it's if we're not getting all of our, but then we need to know that so we know how much to ask for. You see what I mean? So it kind of... How much of that grant for the lift, what's the percentage on that? The percentage on or how much funds are in the grant like sometimes they say this grant is for 50 percent oh of um what it's I, gonna cost you. That's a good i have to look back at it but i think it's an outright grant i don't believe there was a match there might be if it's an outright grant that's i think we have an easy answer <laughs> but that'd be good to know <laughs> okay i mean at least we're only talking about these two things <laughs> and and the digitalization of all town records, but that's small. No that well, that would solve the storage problem, right? At least yeah. in terms of the square footage, the reunion yes. said, I mean, if you're digitizing town records, then you're not going to need as much storage space. Yeah, but it costs a lot of money yeah. to digitize town records. And plus, it's going to take a couple of years for us to go through just to see what needs to be. And I can't even get a quote. For how much it'll cost us until we've culled everything mm -hmm. and we can say this is how many drawers we have that need Veronique, to be does, does the town have a document retention policy? Well, there are, I mean, there's state laws that say what oh, you gotcha. need to, yeah. Yeah so, okay. yeah. so each department has kind of their own guidelines for what they have to go by. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, I mean, some of these files haven't been gone through in so many years. Yeah. And it's just going to take a lot of people hours yeah. to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Well, we can table it and I'll look in about the grant for the lift if you want to see. All right. Yeah, if you don't mind. I and sure. all right, we'll talk about this soon because obviously we don't want to keep people waiting. All right, we'll table that too. We have Oh, yes, cool. no, no, <laughs> clear vision, clear vision. <laughs> and so we could let's let's go forward. Let's go. so the police chief screening committee, police chief hiring screening committee. We have Howard Boyden and Chief Lamet. Um, and, and you and Barry and, and, and me and okay. myself and Brian. <laughs> it's true. This yep. is true. But uh we did want to. We can we want to hear from sure Howard to make the report of the committee or yep. more or less. Yep. You all ready? Sure. Okay. Um, we had four applicants. It was quite easy to push two of them aside and not even interview them with back between back background checks and a little bit of all of us doing a little bit of indi individual internet checking. It was pretty easy for us to say. No, let's not waste our time and theirs because they were from a long ways away also. Um, and we narrowed it down to two that we interviewed. One of them clearly did not fit all of the criteria, but he really seemed promising. And we thought, you know, he's local, let's uh, and he's young. And let's let's hear him out. And we were pretty impressed with him, but when push came to shove and everything you know, was out on the table, it turned out to be quite a no-brainer. And so our recommendation for you is to hire Don Bates from Whiteley um, for the next police chief because he has the qualifications, he knows Conway, he's local, and uh, it, it's just turned out to be pretty much a no-brainer. And he passed all the due diligence background checks? He did, and okay. then some. Yes, mm -hmm. and then some. He was the only one that passed all the due diligence background checks without okay. any question or explanation. Okay. So, uh, like I said, once everything was laid out on the table, uh, we thought, you know, maybe we'd bring, we'd bring you two choices and let you make a decision. But really, just like finance committee work or anything else, the hard work gets done behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, we really did. We, we, uh, we really uh, fleshed it out good, and and this is what we came up with. So that's our recommendation. Anything to add to that? No, it's that pretty much sums up exactly what the committee did. It's been a lot of, a lot of time doing the research. And I did, you know, the the uh, 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 when when one of the final or one of the one of the people that you interviewed. Just does not meet the qualifications that you set out in writing for the position, and that's sort of <laughs> that's kind of where you stop with that. I mean, it's more or less. I mean, um, the, the 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 candidate did interview very well, but uh, he did not meet the qualifications that were set out, and uh, as a governing as a government entity. We're supposed to hire people that meet the qualifications in the job description that we, otherwise we actually do open ourselves up to um, legal challenge. Mm -hmm. So and someday he will probably make some small town a very good place. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were that impressed, but but really all cards on the table. It was pretty easy to uh, pretty easy to see where we needed to go. It's fortunate that we found someone who's local and qualified. Right. <laughs> so I think our job is done, and it's up to you guys now to uh, sign them on, figure out what you're going to pay them, and that's, that's <laughs> your job. What we have to decide is what our process is going to be. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I think I think when we it, it, it makes sense to me, it makes sense to have us as a group asking questions, sure. and then and, you know. Um, to, you know, interview them or to, 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 you know. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, so, the, and then um, do, do we want to just ask them the same questions that we asked them before, or do we want to work on our own questions and write our own questions, or do we want to ask for money to write all the questions up for us? <laughs> um, <laughs> or if we could see the questions. Yeah, you I'm sure it's <laughs> what is that? Um, 
Yeah, the big thing is that I'm It's just the screening thing. And Chief, I, I assume, would assume you have history, you know, this person. Yeah, this individual actually has worked under me for 18 years. Okay. <laughs> so he's quite familiar with the town. Do you work under Harold Swift? Huh? Do you work under Harold Swift? Absolutely good. Well, that's good training. <laughs> And he has kept the fire department certified in first responders and CPR for at least 15 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you want to schedule yeah. something tonight? Or, 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 you know, for a week or two from now? Yeah, a week, mm -hmm. next week. But um, not during the regular or during the regular meeting? I mean, it has to be public, so it doesn't. Right, yeah. but it doesn't have to be during the regular meeting, so that's why I was asking. I'm fine with whatever works. Just, just spend a few minutes during the regular meeting. Okay. Um, yeah. it, it, you know, if, if we could get the, the questions part of the thing equation out of the way next week, not out of the way, but completed next week, then we the, the um, we we felt that the, I know the committee felt that it, there'd be benefit in making the decision sooner rather than later. Because even though um, Kenny's with us until June thirtieth, the um, there's benefit in the new person starting early enough to get a taste for our budgeting process, and, like, and which is very time sensitive. So, um, and that's it's an important part of the position. And you know, that's there's no way to expose someone to that besides just exposing them to it. So. Um, so if it's okay, do that. We can make as much progress next week. That would be great. So we can um, interview the gentleman. It'll right. be done the following week. Or mm -hmm. sooner. So I'll send everybody the questions that we used, and then, um, well, that's the question. Do you, you know, because you're going to need to decide what questions you're going to ask. So <laughs> that's this, right. Right. At this point, though, you can pretty much ask what questions come to mind, which, you know, you don't even have to have them written down. You can see what we asked, but at this point, you're down to one candidate. You don't have to worry about, about you know, being the same for everybody. You guys can pretty much ask what, what comes to mind after looking at the questions that we've already asked, and, and it should be a, a fairly simple um, project, I would think. But, and, I, and I did want the select board to know that, you know, that, um, the, it's the select board's decision. Like, you don't, just the you, the select board could actually completely disregard the recommendation of the of the steering committee. I, um, I'm not recommending that, but but it is the select board's decision. And I don't want you, to, you both to feel like you're being led by the halter to a certain decision. This is just the recommendations that think it, it makes sense. So it's it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard for the select board to recommend you know offering the position of someone that doesn't meet the qualifications in the job. Right. You know that's really the two. Uh, yeah. So just the just want to say that, and um, um, Well, thank you, search committee, for your work. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for asking. Actually, <laughs> it was it was actually an honor to do this. These are these are impossible shoes to fill. So I know you the best you can get it. And I appreciate that I was asked. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Um, so we'll take it. We'll do questions next week and. See if, how much work, how much we can get done with that, and if possible, bring bring done in the week after. Can I just can I accept the process? And who writes the offer letter? Who's the select board? Right. Council Select board is the direct supervisor. They do a little bit. Uh, is that something that would be managed by a personal committee in the future? Well, that didn't really. It didn't, um, you know, a lot of the process would at least be advised by the personnel committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we do. Right? 
We have nobody on the first knock. But they, we're fixing to get one started up again. I hope it does. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right here. Exactly. Exactly. I don't want to stare too But she doesn't want to be the only one. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, we don't have corn. Up here. You do. Well, we have here. corn. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You do. Yeah, you got you. Yeah, six thirty. Can I call the finance committee meeting? Yeah, order? please. I call the finance committee meeting to order. Join me with the honorable select board. Just yes. motion. Second. All right. All right. Um, what about you, Mr. Capital Improvements Committee? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I vote to call the meeting to order for the Capital Improvement Committee. Second. Uh, and we're uh, full. We have a full membership here. All right. So you want, you want to do the you want to do the uh, your recommendations. So yes, you, you actually are first the capital improvement. Oh, okay, great. So this should go pretty quickly, actually. Um, you have this list in front of you. Yep. Okay. Oh no. 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 Oh, there. Yeah, you want this one. Oh, yeah. Give me one. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. Well, here, take that again. Yeah. Thank well, you. I will show. Yeah. I, have I, I, I don't know. No, we'll and, <laughs> I know. Beth and Roy, we're just going over that same Excel sheet. Oh, you have it up there. Attorney. Uh, so on here, you'll see um, for the place. Uh, see his voice trying to talk. Uh, year to replace. Um, we mainly were looking at the 2024. Hey, let's mute it. Roy, can you mute? Thank you. Thanks, Roy. Uh, as we had stated before, for the grader, he has a, uh, Ron has a pretty good rate for rental. So we continue, uh, we're going to continue to look at a rental for the grader instead of uh, replacing the current one. Uh, the dump truck, uh, currently it's the old ambulance, and Ron believes that he can, again, wait um, for the ambulance uh, that's going to be replaced probably in the next few years. Uh, so, again, we'll use that old ambulance. And we don't put the dump truck body on it? But... Yeah, he'd, so they'll just take the, the cab off the back and, that, and then dump truck on top. Uh, now the others are going to need replaced, and this is the recommendation of the committee: is to look at replacing the Dodge Ram 3500 pickup. Uh, Ron is requesting a new vehicle, not a used. Um, replace the Volvo compact loader, and then I'll added to that a boom lift, the infamous chipper and chipper box as well. And there are reasons behind wanting a new pickup as opposed to a rental. We went through the same process we did with Bob Baker. Um, I do understand Ron's issues because any repair would come out of his budget. His operating budget. His operating yeah. budget. Yeah. Which, yeah which is very, very tight as right. is. Right. And excuse me, we didn't have the price up there for the boom lift and the shipper and box. I know it was 92 plus seven for the shipper and box, correct? Mm -hmm. And the boom lift, I believe, is 90,000. Were they left off this list on purpose or was there? No, I, they were never on the list. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were never on the list in the first place. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, this, this list was mainly made to. Uh, for the inventory, the current inventory, mm -hmm. uh, replacement year, expected life value, uh, trade in value. So the the trade in values here definitely need to be up, uh, updated. So I am waiting on that from, from Ron. Okay. So no vote or anything, but these are going to be our recommendations. Mm -hmm. Very brave of you. <laughs> yeah. 
Great great with you. Anything in particular? The, the, the new pickup? Do you think that? Well, I you know I I, I think going over recent history, the 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 reluctance to um, compromise and get used new used instead of new is the reason why he doesn't have a chipper right now. It's the reason why he doesn't have a truck right now. Um, with all these things, they would have voted in the past few years. And people at town meetings stood up and tried to create a compromise. And and he, he would say, no, I want new. And he would get nothing. I think that's the dynamic that exists in this town. And that, um, but we'll see. That's why I said, they forward into the breach. We'll see what happens, yo. A good, um, a good point that Veronica brought up in the meeting that we had and that I would like to bring up to any town meeting is this is before I even moved here, but um, the highway facility had a budget. Uh, it had funds and Ron was able to get that done and save half a million. So. And a huge part of that was the hours he put in himself. Right. right. Not that the other members didn't, but boy, did he put in an awful lot of work. I see. So, oh, and I think he was told me he was comfortable with saying there'll be 450,000 left because there is a little bit of work that still needs to be done. But that's an incredible feat to have saved the town from that amount of money. Um, Yeah, I, I, nonetheless, it is brave of you. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Man, it's good. You know, somebody's got to stand up and for the concept of capital planning. Yeah, and I'm not. And, and honestly, that's what this town to me. That's what this town has had the, the biggest problem with is the concept of capital planning. And I don't think the town has ever actually accepted the concept of capital planning. And when you when you say you know these the years out, this is. Mm -hmm. How to how to maximize the trade in versus you know the, and, and when we did that the town never bought that either we're, right we right and and there would always be a guy standing up against the wall with his le one leg up against the wall saying how many hours that machine have on it yeah, yeah. you use it until you it falls apart blah, blah, blah. and that's what people have always rallied around that logic the the classic Yankee. Isn't it that if it's reaching its end of its expected lifespan, it is falling apart by default? Yeah, um, and, and, and that, you know, people have never accepted that. I mean, and it really hasn't ever been close to people accepting that. But, but it, you know, it's one of those things if you keep on delivering that message. Well, the other thing that we talked about was, you know, Ron made it pretty clear that he didn't want to get up in front of town getting it right. defend himself. Exactly. <laughs> Which I don't blame him because, you know, he's running the highway department. He's, it's not his role to be attacked by people who are voting at town meeting. So we kind of unanimously agree that the people speaking at town meeting would be the people on the right. capital improvements committee. Ron yep. may offer factual information about the equipment, but you know, he, we're not going to put him in a position where he's right. going to have to defend himself. So I'm going to call another Committee meeting together so we can all get together and come up with a plan for um, and the story, that, the story, the story, that, yes. the story that you tell. Exactly. And I know, and I know we have tried that. I know there were a couple of years ago. You know, you 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 took it upon yourself, Bob, to to really try to be the one to answer the question. But inevitably, someone asks a question that only Ron could answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he stands up there, and once he starts talking, nobody ever lets him stop talking. Well, we and, can coach him. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty interested in not. Being oh, I know. in the spotlight, so I know the trade off would be it's, Ron, you know, just it's answer the question. It's a hard Don't thing. Go on a Stand, standing up there with your hat in your hand is a hard, hard thing. I have a question about the money that was saved on the public works bill. I mean, we obviously voted a budget to get it done. What happened to the excess funds that are the leftover funds that were not expended? Do they go into the general fund or are it, it, it'll be a vote of town meeting to decide? And I'll be honest with you, one of the thoughts that I had had was that we could use, and this was just an initial thought, but we have some money in capital stabilization, which we could use for some of the highway equipment, and then we could use some from the funds that are left over 450,000. Mm -hmm. 
So that would require a vote at town meeting to reallocate those funds. Correct. 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 Right. Okay. And I was kind of hoping to use the rest of what was left of the 250000 to go to the public safety building. Mm -hmm. Because if we did that, plus a couple, another couple of special revenue funds we had, we might be able to fund the public safety building outright and not even have to take out any mm -hmm. loans, which would be my preference, and get it done. like So quickly. this sounds like it's sort of a... a a cohesive presentation that needs to be sort of made to town meeting yeah. or you know we were talking about having the free town meeting and mm -hmm. all of that right so just just to help people tie that together instead of just seeing a bunch of warrants you know listed one after another because you know warrant you know you don't get a chance to really explain how it's all right. Ron saved us you know half a million dollars on this and you know we feel like you know, this is a good use of those extra funds so anyway I know you I but I agree. If I if I'm taking your point, is that we need to have our stories cohesive. Not, yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it has to yes. be a good process. Yeah. yeah. But the decision has to be made before we can create stories. Right. right. <laughs> you know, people have to decide how they you know what if how what they want to ask town meeting to do with that mm -hmm. four hundred fifty thousand. Um, you know how they you know and that's. Perhaps another discussion after your next capital improvements to come back here and say, right. okay, this is what capital improvements proposes. Mm -hmm. This is what the select board thinks, and then yeah. you know, and discuss what more arguments you want. And it's yes. also, I think this is also one of those things. That, the, the quote from Mike Tyson about how everybody has a plan in the ring until they get punched in the mouth the first time. <laughs> And it's like everybody's got a plan at town meeting until the residents stand up and start asking questions. And like that's. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So is this going to be presented? How how will these capital reports be presented? That will be presented now. What, what format will be used? The town warrants. Well, my thought was that capital improvements would create um, a little uh, a PowerPoint, you know, handout just yeah. like finance did last yeah. year. Yeah. You know, so finance shows where all the monies. Uh, how yeah. all the accounts are, you know, how they're all doing. Capital could do the same thing, do a little history of, you know, the equipment, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, I know Bob had put together a big spreadsheet that showed what had been purchased, but also what had not been purchased. And I think that was in the finance committee report last year as well, just to give it a history of it. Mm -hmm. um, and we had also talked about um, maintenance hours part of the difficulty ron has is that he spends a lot of time doing the maintenance himself mm -hmm. now and that's great to be able to do it in the house but that's also time our time and money and mm -hmm. you know so i think that was part of the other issue with wanting new equipment is you know it's not just aware on buying all the replacement parts but it's also if it's something you have to farm out mm -hmm. that costs a lot but if you do it in-house that costs your time away from other jobs so right well, that was part of the thing that I remember we talked about because it's like, what do you what do you want Ron doing? Out maintaining the public roads or fixing sure, stuff because it's doesn't. falling on him because he doesn't have any right. other way to get it, a piece of equipment back on our which I think is part of the story that gets told at town meeting. And I agree that a PowerPoint presentation is better than a spreadsheet because people at town meeting they just some people can absorb a spreadsheet on a screen by looking at it for 15 seconds, but I would argue a lot of people can't. I can't. <laughs> no, I think it's best to have the handouts in hand and when you get there, you know, you can just kind of you can do the presentation, but have them flip through it as yeah. As I'd like to make a suggestion of this. And when you have the number of years, that's not a lot of work. That feedback I mean it goes by engine hours, not years. I think it'd be really important to have the greater useful life in terms of engine hours and the engine years that actually have been expended on how it works. Mm -hmm. I think that's been a lot of pushback by our uh, motor heads in town meeting. So uh, and yeah, then anticipated we, trading values on things, but the new board did not have Right. I know that one of the things Ron had been hoping to do and, and been trying to explain was that when you do that trade-in, if you do it at a certain point, it's like a sweet spot for right. the trade-in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there have been quite a few people who, who say, and you know, I have a 10-year-old car myself. I'm happy to run it to the ground, but it doesn't really work that way for in government work. You need to be able to have working equipment. Industrial equipment is rated by engine hours, 
Yeah, but who's, who's doing yeah. the maintenance plan? I mean, in aerospace, yeah, where I work. Right, come with the manufacturing schedule maintenance plan is supposed to have that. It says it does have it. So it's part all right, of sitting so down, the data, then. sitting down and taking the time to fill out properly so we don't all this ad nauseum discussion at town meeting about what is and what should be. And what yeah. Yeah. I know he's working on putting together um, the maintenance costs, but like you said, it's a bit amorphous because a lot of it's his time and you know, you get to that, well, how much do you really want to have your highway guy spend his administrative time figuring out how much time he actually spent yeah. fixing the equipment as opposed to doing the rest of it, you know, and it gets a bit absurd. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm sure he can give us a ballpark. But, yeah. He's also been doing so many times. He's like, why would I put all that <laughs> effort into it when yeah. it's just going to get voted down? Well, you know, I've gone through town associations, annual town finance, the association of town finance committee meetings. And I can tell you right now, it's best practice. They do in the bigger towns is they have a picture of the equipment that's to be replaced, picture of the new equipment, rated engine hours on it, what the issues are to keep it, the cost, and then, then people can see for themselves that's mm -hmm. further discussion, trade off of keeping versus trading and getting it there. Right? And there's no mm -hmm. discussions. Yeah, really, I mean, it just should be glanced over. And we don't do it here. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we're setting ourselves up. Discussion ad nauseum about this and that with information we don't have. People are asking for. Yeah. So, something that I don't know that it should come up in town meeting, but maybe it's a select board issue. But a while ago, I think it was under Tom Hutchinson, uh, Ron got changed to being paid salary instead of hourly. And uh, that means Ron doesn't pay for all of the overtime he works. Right. And, and he did. Uh, I, I'm amazed he doesn't <laughs> complain about that more, mm -hmm. and it feels not fair. Yeah. They've been for me for me to watch Ron work on road prep all during the Festival of the Hills over time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's there. Well, I got to go down to the Festival of the every, Hills. He works seven days a week like, yeah. all the time. He works Sundays. He works Saturday nights. He's Isn't right. Like, always there. Story? Yeah, um, and I, I think um, he doesn't. He doesn't take vacation. We we have had discussions, and I think if he even just got overtime for stomach ice, that would be something. Well, because it's been it's been presented in the past, not this past year, but definitely last year. That's not much as in the town administrator. There was a request for a nine thousand dollar bonus on the personnel committee, which was in place at the time, but not recommended because there was no policy in the town about bonus employees. Precedent that they could set, mm -hmm. and it was voted down. Actually, mm -hmm. made it the time easy. Well, but I assume that there is a, a job classification of salary plus overtime, you, you, you know, mm -hmm. I, the, the, especially I would think for snow and ice. Yes, like tonight, you mean <laughs> yeah. for the next yeah. couple of days, yeah, <laughs> easily. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I don't think that that needs to be part of the uh, uh, the town meeting discussion. But uh, it, it, whatever we talk about, Ron, it just sort of sits there and just mm -hmm. things. Yeah. 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 All right. So. So that was the discussion. That's the discussion. Yeah. 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 More work. Yeah. More work to be done by capital improvements. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for your good work. Yeah. We're just introducing yeah, where we are. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's got to be solutions to all this stuff. Yeah. Got it. One of one of these years. One of these years. It took four years of time to arrive. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it did for real. That's not an exaggeration. Uh anybody else have those? Um Seth, Roy. Hi, Roy. <laughs> All right. Okay. No, I, well, I'll just say but the one thing that I usually say, sorry, the, uh, the, the sweet spot on a quick, this is, this is always a matter of contention. It's been that way since I started serving on, on the uh, finance committee or since I started going to town meeting actually, which is already a long time ago. Um, what, what we've never had and is we we have never had sort of a uh, 
a fact-based presentation on sort of useful life for these for these uh, different equipments and um, and just we've never had a way. I mean, people people do understand it sort of innately, but then they don't, and it really helps to to put the numbers together and uh, and just spell it out to them. I think most people, at least younger people these days, are acutely aware of um, of the repair conundrum and how expensive it is to repair stuff today. <laughs> and I, I don't I don't really have anything specific in mind, but I, I you know maybe a short presentation on this stuff would could help. Um, but we don't even actually I'm sorry, uh, Vincizi, uh, what was her name? She she wants uh, uh, Patricia Vincizi, who was on the capital improvements. Uh, Bob, you, were, uh, Bob Armstrong, you were probably there at that arrow, I think, um, but maybe not. But she yes. was able to dig up some uh, some data, which I think was helpful. You know, like how long you could expect to run a dump truck for uh, this this kind of stuff. So um, that's it. I don't want to say anything else. But it's this is nothing new. And I think the the um, I think the aim of the of the um, of the select board and the finance committee. I mean, if if we if we are sincere about approving a piece of equipment uh, purchase, or um, we should be prepared to defend it, is what I think in in a uh, in a hearty manner, if I could put it that way. That's it. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Great. Thank you. Cheers. <sighs>
steps add to that as well. But, yeah. So in other words, at least eighty percent of this two point two percent is coming from that. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> Phil, were there yeah. were there uh, significant cuts to that were made to limit it to the two point percent? Um. Or, or reduction in services or increase in class it sizes, is, anything that it's useful to be aware of? It is a level services budget. Um, the, uh, I, I, know, I know because we got the, the emergency bridge repair done that we they were able to shave off some of the extra transportation costs that they were allocating for it. So that that helps. Um, the memo from Shelley says that new initiatives discussed during budget development included the addition of two instructional assistant positions as well as adjustments for several non-salary expenditures to cover expenses based on actual costs. Ultimately, these items were not included in the budget as they would have, would have resulted in an increase of $122,000. Right. Yeah, sorry, but I think that's that funny. Here. Oh, sorry. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't have any paperwork like that for yeah. the grammar school. So yet. for the grammar, sorry, the grammar that. school, yeah. the, what the, the the item that was taken out of the budget was the um, employee separation cost, the twenty one thousand dollar, right? That line item for the that that was a that, maybe, that that's coming out. Of when we were there, they had they had not voted, but they had agreed yeah. in principle with that we're taking that out so that's right so and, it was a, and that that changed it from 3.3 3 to 2.3 yeah. because that is one percent of the school budget that was the item yeah i remember that that was it he was there i just did <laughs> <laughs> um so that, yeah, okay. So that's the, any other questions about the school budget, the grammar school? I'm just surprised at the transportation numbers considering every other budget we've looked at that includes any type of fuel mm -hmm. transportation has had a substantial increase. So there's a little bit of a context to that. And that is because we have the same vendor for the high school and the grammar school. Mm -hmm. The way that that works is we get reimbursement from the state for our regional transportation costs, mm -hmm. and we do not get reimbursed for our for our own district. But be, but we encourage um, we encourage the the billing um, to take that into account to the extent that it can, and so um, and we're lucky to have a cooperative vendor who understands that, but. And he drives the school bus. Too. And he drives the school. And actually, I saw him driving the bus. And I know he drives each route like periodically. Yeah. And I saw a bus going really fast on Shelburne Falls Road today. And I was like, "Who is that driver?" And I was like, "Oh, I mean, <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um, so, all right. So that's that's the grammar school frontier. Frontier, that number is the number that was passed. And the assessments are on the um, that fifth page, fourth page. Mm -hmm. And also, the, the, our, they did recommend, our, our CPA committee did recommend by a three to two vote to support the tennis court tennis slash pickleball court um, <laughs> um, and, uh, and and then the rest of it that is based on our assessment so is that um good thing we're not trying so for, for our, our town assessments this year frontier is up 2.88 and where where the overall budget is up two point nine two, so we are sort of the exact median or average or whatever. So, um, I so are any of those resources like pickleball courts and track? Are those community resources that people in the town can use? Or they, they are. Okay. And the, the, we actually own those. The frontier. Yeah. yeah. And this. 
So adult leagues can use those facilities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, if I'm trying to run for, and I could, I, I've used that track a couple of times. The one time I went down there at five in the morning, there's like three other Conway residents there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's really easy on your, it's padded. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's easier service. on your knees yeah. and ankles. Um, and you can park like right there and walk right through the systems. Okay. Same thing with the tennis courts. Yeah. I don't have any questions. All kinds of questions about putting on the tire. <laughs> I can only imagine OG high tops. The little wristband. Yeah, right. No, high tops because we don't have that twisted hands. Do you have any questions, comments about either the Canada Grammar School or the Frontier Regional School budgets? I I don't. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else with the finance committee then? Nothing new. Nope. All right. You guys. All right. Till next week. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Thanks, Roy. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. So now, Alan, you said he won't be here next week. Right? That's correct. I'm going to be out of communication. Good for you. I'm going to Mexico. Oh, oh good nice. for you. Chase the sun. <laughs> I bring it back with you. Yeah. Oh, that's well. It's going away in your bag. Yeah, she loves it. She loves oh, yeah. it. That Wouldn't want to live out there. Right? <laughs> but neither. She doesn't. Like Arizona, great place to visit, but one day it's not going to be here. Yeah. That's how I was last week. That's why I was in here. It was, it was oh, yeah. seven degrees all the time. All right. Um, so the last item in new business is the second transfer stage in the public hearing. Yeah. Well, you did it like on a Thursday. Yeah. That seems to work okay. So we mix it up because Thursday Thursday has been really good days. Let me just check okay. the um the website just to see who's doing new what thing. Um, was seven o'clock? Uh, was it? Is that when we did it? Or did we do, no, we did five? I have it off my calendar. It's, it's 5.30 to 5.30. Right, okay. If you wait till the first week of April, you can get it in the common current again. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I'm going to be out the week of April 17th, so. Well, just to let you all know, I have ordered next year's stickers because I had to do the permit stickers for the cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be good. Oh, we don't schedule for that. Yeah. <laughs> so we probably reschedule our coordinating for that. Week. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But the stickers, I mean, Wait, which April was? The week of 17. April 17th. Oh, okay, good. Because I don't think that's the week you're supposed to sign the <laughs> warrant. <Yeah. laughs> I think it's the 23rd. I have to look. Yeah, I'll be back. Um, did you want to wait until April? Was that well? I like the idea of getting it in the current again. Good idea. So, Thursday the 6th, there's a planning board here from 7 8 30. The 13th, please looks like them. Thursday the 13th, April. Oh, that's when you're. No, I'm no, it's um, the next yes, week. that's the following week. That yeah. that's that works good. for me. I have to okay, so Thursday is the 13th. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, did you want me to invite Janet in here? I think it would be helpful <laughs> if she's willing to come back. I feel like there's inevitably going to be questions that we just are not as well as to answer. Offer her the chance to participate by Zoom. Sure. We're doing 5 30. Is that? That's yeah, that's 5 30. Yeah, that's 5 30. 6 30. 30.
Okay. Um, items not in dispute 48 hours. Now, town administrator update. You've already seen that. Credit. Got it. Yeah, got it. <laughs> um, next select one. So next next amp solar array letter. Anything that we want to discuss about that, or we just want to make sure that it's included. Just make sure it's included. Um, that was a letter by the our, a resident, yes, a neighbor of the facility. It seems that they're not getting updates from the next three. Yeah. Um Announcements just so that you know the the both of you know the wood bank the we was the DCR was going to come okay. so you you might have missed it the the DCR reached out to us about starting the wood bank right um, and they have grants and all kinds of other goodies including for Ron but possibly for a piece of equipment wow. like a like chipper a, not <laughs> yeah yeah not a right. chipper but like a little a, a, a thing a, a thing that grapples and so that you oh. still only have to like lift the log once which was wow. like Ron's whole thing yeah and that um yeah so uh and it was going to be it was going to be this Wednesday but they postponed it to Thursday March 30th at 10 a.m. Um, at, at the highway facility and it's the DCR guy um, and I suppose I should also announce that we postponed the ribbon cutting ceremony for Mass DOT um, because it was snowed out on February 28th. So we're hoping to hold it on March 28th at noon at the bridge, at the new bridge, temporary bridge. Okay. We have the, the next meeting of the select board is going to be March, Monday, March 20th, 6 p.m. here. Um, and um, next on the agenda, so what I'm now going to propose is that we adjourn the public meeting and we adjourn into an executive session. And the executive session is to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual, or to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. And we are going to. Can we just something? What's that? Can we just do something? It's, that, that is actually completely your choice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, what I just said, just forget. <laughs> we're, not um, going into we're not going into an executive session, and we are just going to continue our open meeting um, at the request of the employee. So, uh, you, you yeah. can uh, if, if you if you like, uh, what would you like me to do? The owl could see you if you want to be on the owl over here better. Okay. Oh, wherever you want. So we'll table the minutes to an executive session just to be clear. Okay. Oh, that's right. Yes. That's important. You have to be in executive session. Okay. Um. Yes, it's really great. Oh, yeah. Lori. Oh, <laughs> okay. I guess so. I don't know. Where do I? Oh. Okay. Um. So, uh, Roxy, do you like to be called Roxy or Roxanne? Either one. Roxy's friend. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, we, we, the, the select board sent you um, some documents and notice about, about uh, uh, 
about the town's uh, non disparagement policy. Uh, and so, just the, and that's so, so the town, well, you are a town employee by virtue of you being elected to office, just like we're all town employees, mm -hmm. just like all your fellow assessors are town employees. And so there is, uh, in, in the employee handbook, there's policy that about social media, it's just a non-disparagement clause. And- um, She's so smart. Shame is quiet. Sorry. <laughs> That is a huge difference. That is disparaging just by saying that. That's a big difference. That's there's a huge difference between that and saying, in my opinion, this seems conflicting. Um, well, I have one, one, one is one is one is just factual assertion, which is by definition disparaging to the versus versus which is different than factual so um, when there's no qualifiers like that and, and it's just this is a conflict of interest that's the that's a disparaging thing but I do have a thing from the lawyer sometimes in the state it stated that and I presented it to the assessor. And so it wasn't like my own opinion, which is which is your opinion. But see, it, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter whether the assertion is true. It's because it's just it, it's disparaging in and of itself, and it's not necessary to be true. Like, like I, I watched a lot of your video, a lot of your meetings. You have a lot of good ideas. <laughs> you do. Yeah, anything. Yeah, but no, I've seen I've seen you have good ideas, and like um, this this bit of it, like the the, the the it's not necessarily you know, but you, the way that you get ideas enacted, the way that you get your committee to go with your ideas is to persuade. Them. That, and it's it's hard to do, and it might not work at first. But like it definitely doesn't work when you disparage and it's 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 I didn't look at okay. I guess I didn't look at it, but I'm saying the word. I was trying to understand or we would be saying it again. We just can't. As a group, we will I cannot do that. And that's what to the class that we should just follow up the rules that we've always done. And because we can't do it as a conscious team. That's all. I'm just trying to put it out there. Because how many people actually watch our sessions at the meetings? <laughs> well, I, I haven't. Yeah. I mean, maybe they were coming up with something a question you asked earlier, mm -hmm. which was because I've seen almost every meeting. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, like Phil, I think there's some really good ideas. But I've also heard you with the public saying things about the other two assessors that are disparaging. They're saying as if they're doing something to fix their own properties. Um, and to be honest, when you say in here that they're, they're now refusing to let you in to do their home assessments, 
it's actually the ignorance sort of the thing because of the comments you've made public. So, okay. and I think that, to be honest with you, that speaks volumes to not saying disparaging things about people. I guess to be honest. And I keep on coming back to the point. What happened there, I don't even think they were in question to the mayor and clerk. It's that that really raised those questions. Of course, we can raise the question of where it's going. But to have it be not in, you know, a, a meeting that's being recorded where you have them probably say written what you're referring to, mm -hmm. where you can have a debate, discourse, whatever it is, in that form, um, as opposed to, you know, this is one side. So it's just one person doing their talk and say whatever they want to say without the other person being able to respond. Mm -hmm. So it really, to me, it really the form itself. And I think you're right and a lot of people watch our meetings, but mm -hmm. if that would be the place to bring it up and then we could point people in the direction of that. Say, I brought this up to the other session. Look at their response. And, and to me, this, this what when we, when we, when, when we, when the select board has reached out to me and to discuss the social media, this did not have anything to do with what took place in, inside your committee room. Um, this is just strictly your social media, your social media posts. That, that, that there's a policy about, and that, uh, yeah, the non disparity, the, the necessity that your social media posts be non disparity. I thought it was pretty factual, but well, I guess that was yeah, just it's, the way it's I, right. I, 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 that's what I think. Well, they wanted to hear it spoke about in open meeting. Right, and you know, and so I mean, I'm to you know, your credit, your credit. I, I have something to do with this way. That's, that's, that's that much. That's my note. And, you know, like what we said is if there was, the select board has two options, which is A, do nothing, or B, um, uh, censure. Censure of the input, which is a fancy way of saying don't do that. Unelected, the select board would have many more disciplinary, whatever, whatever you want to label it, a disciplinary option, including termination, etc. But um, you know, because it is an elected official, it's not one of the other the two options are do nothing or 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 censor. Um, censor is the lowest or weakest form of Discipline, if you want to call it that, that is actually corrected. Mm -hmm. 
to, to me, the, the statement, this is a conflict of interest. It, it is it is it is the fact that that conclusion is made as a statement of fact mm -hmm. that, that is disparaging and when when it, when the colleagues um, if they were participating in that discussion would with, with A, they would dispute whether or not it is a conflict of interest, but that doesn't even matter. That it's just because you're stating it as a fact, um, and it is unlawful, uh, an accusation of unlawful conduct, that is that is disparate. And and it's just not like you, 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 it's perfect, it's appropriate to spell out all the reasons why you might think something is a conflict of interest, which you did in that first paragraph. Mm -hmm. What is inappropriate is that conclusionary statement. That says that this is unlawful. You know, this is a conflict of interest. So we're talking about the town social media policy. Okay, I guess I guess. Which, which which is be not which just says be nice. Yeah, be nice. So even and, and though so, even so, though I was just listing what state guidelines were or what the facts were. You know, uh, it, well, I guess that's what I'm li listing. Listing all the reasons why you think it might be a conflict of interest. Th those were made in open meeting. Um, it's appropriate to discuss those in any way you want. That's but it's when where you cross the line is when you said all of that above. That's a conflict of interest. Like that, it's it's not necessary, <laughs> and it's not nice. And and. Um, you know, because it's you're, you're putting it as a statement of fact and it's unlawful. So that's and that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We disagree with acting in this. Oh, I, I know you can. <laughs> I know you can. I know you can. So um so, so to, you know, to me, the 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 and impeach, I think, and I know, I know we well, did do our disciplinary action. I know no. we, I know we did do like a removal of elected thing by law like recently, yeah, but that's, that, that's and, then to, yeah. and, it, and it, it, that's only yeah, like that doesn't fly at all. We're not doing that or contemplating that. And what is the sentence? Um, that means don't do this again. <laughs> So that's so. So I make a motion that we that we come to and make that same motion again. Second. 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 There are no prior restraints <laughs> that the central cannot restrain you from posting in the future. And nor would I want to. Everybody should have the right to speak and the right to voice their opinion. It's where you where you cross the line is where you state as a matter of fact that your colleagues are engaged with them. And we do have a lot of long stuff that you can do. Everything that we've discussed is on. Oh, I know that. Right, the social media policy, we don't even have to worry about the things that come up. Okay, first time to vote. I'm sorry, I heard a motion in silence. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
Thank you for making this yeah. an open, the open meeting that was a good effort to support. And, yeah. um, I mean, thank you. Let you know what we're doing with your list. I'm about to ask you to do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would recommend it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I would definitely suggest you know, again, it's all about it's not only that, but just the operation of it. And I'm sure it's all so I, I think that it would be helpful for you. But you're right, I don't think it's going to No. Yeah. You can't get brought up. Right. <laughs> you can't get brought up for the same thing. No, it doesn't get brought up for itself. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 